Hi guys, it's Lisa from Earth Petal here. Welcome. We're doing the easy breezy cherry blossom in the moonlight painting. All right, so I have, as usual, my supplies here ready to go. Primary colors, so red, primary red, uh, bright yellow or primary yellow, phthalo blue, black and white. And then for brushes, I have a large brush to get the background filled in. And then I have a medium brush. You can also use, instead of a flat brush, you can use a round. So something like these. For this one, probably the round one is a good idea. It does a lot of things that you can do for making the branches and some of the flowers and also maybe some detailed brushes. Good for little tiny details on the flowers if you want to do that, but a lot of it is achieved just by using this brush here or even this brush. Okay, so move that a little bit. This is available on replay as usual. And we're going to start with our background to get everything filled in. We're going to put our moon and if you have something circular you can use to trace around that's probably good for the moon and you can use any size canvas this is just a 11 by 14 yeah okay so i'm just dipping my large brush into the water and i'm going to start with um, just a light color for the moon i'm going to take some white pull it to the side Take a little dip of yellow and the tiniest, tiniest little dot of red. See, just a tiny little dot there. Start off really, it doesn't, it doesn't really change much. So it's not supposed to be pinkish, it's supposed to be mostly yellow. So for my moon, I'm going to put this off to the side, not completely center. And you can go really as big as you want to because you can always shrink it. I would go a little bit bigger than you plan. Just go around in a circle. So I went a little bit bigger than I plan on going. Right. And then after that, what I'd like to do is just change a little bit of um, the color. So we're going to go a bit more orangey. So it's got more of a orangey, darker side of the moon on one side, and then it's lighter, this color on the other side. So what I do is I take another scoop of yellow, see a big scoop of that, into the same little pile. Then we're just going to add in a little small couple dots of red. And it gives it a very orangey look. So let's start with this. You might want to switch to a smaller, maybe a um, smaller flat brush. This is a lot of paint, so I'm going to wipe a lot of it off. And then starting on the side, I'm just going to go pretty close to the edge. You just kind of lightly tap and dab around while it's still wet. This is going to help blend it out a little bit. So you're starting on the side where you have most of your paint and then you're gonna lightly tap and you can use the more of like the corner of it and a little bit flat as well to get different textures going around the moon. So that's a good start. Then I just wash this off. And I am going to switch to a smaller medium. So you can pause these videos. Always watch them later too. Take your time. So wash that off. Dab it dry for now. So with this one, a little touch in the water. Now we're going to go just a little bit darker. It's good to let it dry a little bit as well, um, but we can go a slight bit darker. 
If you wanna add a little bit of browning into it or just a deeper orange, don't go back in this pile to start a new pile without any white. Mostly yellow, touch of red. You have like three parts to four parts yellow, one part red, it just, it really does make it quite orange. So I'm gonna wipe off a lot of this paint. It's not too heavily coated here. You can even dab it on your napkin. And then with your smaller brush or even a round brush, I like to use more of the side or corner. You're just accenting some spots. And since it's still a bit wet, it doesn't go as dark, but you, when it's a bit more dry, so later before we do the cherry blossoms, you can add a touch, a little touch up on some darker colors. So wipe off a little bit of the paint, most of it really. And I like to just kind of dab, use the side and corners. You can use it flat sometimes. Dab a bunch in a, a spot here. I'm going to keep it nice and smooth around the edges. I don't want the circle to be um, less circle looking. You know, I, I want it to be more rounded on the side. So I'm just going to lightly tap along the sides, but not go outside or too like on the very edge because then it starts looking like a spongy ball instead. Smooth it out a little bit on the sides. Okay, now I can go back to my lighter yellowy white color with that dot of red. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything. Um, it's mostly white, not too much color because you want it to be nice and glowy. Yeah, I'm just using the thin side. You can also use a smaller brush, by the way, you can use your detailed brush to keep it nice and light just around some of the edges here. You can see I just mix just pull some more white into that color that we were just using. You can add a bit more yellow if you want it more yellowy, but I'm just going to go around. Keep it light around here. And we'll come back to that. Leave that for now. I just want to show you a little trick with your finger. You can get rid of some obvious dabs and spots that you don't like. You can just kind of mix it around. Give it a softer look. All right, so washing this off, going back to my large brush, just to fill in my background. So you fill in the background and then we'll come back to the moon. Put some stars around as well. In terms of the background, use whatever, whatever you want really. Let's start with our lighter color and then go darker and darker. If this is still too big, just get a smaller brush. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling some red to the side and just a little touch of blue. So you only want, let's see, four parts red, one part blue, because then otherwise it won't be that reddish purple that we're going for. So you want a big scoop of red, essentially, just a little dab or two of blue. And then this is where I take a nice pea size, just um, something like this, of white. And you'll find that you get a very reddish, purpley color. So if it's too bright, just add a little bit more red, right? And then a, just a dot of blue. And you don't add any more white if you want it darker. Okay, let's start with this. Let's go just kind of maybe a little bit, if you're not sure, just go slightly outside the moon and then work your way in with a smaller brush. Maybe that will make it easier for you. Don't need to make it perfect and exact right away. We do want like a nice ring around. You can go pretty thick. I go pretty thick just because I can darken it, right? So that's easy to do. So I like to go thicker. We're gonna go darker from here. Okay. 
And we like to work a little bit faster while it's still wet to help it blend a lot easier. So I'm getting a really thick ring going around. Nice continuous lines. I'm gonna put that to the side and just go with my smaller round brush or even just a detailed brush. It's pretty close to a detailed brush, but not quite. Okay, so we're gonna use this now to shape our moon. And carefully, a little touch of water is good. Go around. Don't worry if you go slightly inside your moon. When it's dry, you just go back over with that bright yellow to give it a, a glow again. Okay, so once you're done playing around with that, and you decide, okay, that's enough, then we can start switching to some darker colors. All right, so go back to my large brush. And if you washed it off, that's fine. If you didn't, I think that's still fine as well. Um, you just don't want to huge chunk of paint. There's like a little touch in there. So it's okay. We're just using purple. I like to go from here to more of a, just a, a, a deep violet. So that's two parts red and one part blue. And it kind of looks like black right here. And a little touch of white. Just add little dots of blue until you're happy with how non-red or more blue it is. Just a little dot of white is all you really need. And it just turns a bit more of like a violet color. And a touch more blue. That's very deep violet. Okay. So I start outside the ring. Just use a little touch of water. Make sure you have a nice scoop of your paint. You start outside, work your way around. And you go into your lighter purple. Okay, so you just start going into your lighter purple. So you have a much smaller ring than what we have right now. So I am going to the very edge as well too, because I can deepen up the edges. And I'm just going off to the side. So I'm gonna make a much Thicker ring again. And then I'm going to switch, switch to something smaller. Maybe this one is good because you know sometimes it's hard to work with a really big brush. So I'm taking mostly red, two parts red to one part blue. Get a deep violet going. Just go around. Go pretty close. Now purple is an interesting color because sometimes it actually gets really deep and vibrant in color when you go over it. Um, as a second coat. So if you don't want to do a second coat, that's totally okay. See, it just gets, it's very streaky. So I like to do this, go right really close to my purple, my lighter purple. And then with our second coat, it's going to get much darker. We're going to go to more of an indigo. And we're going to do, there's many things you can do. You can skip steps, but we're going to go over our purple close to that ring again, get it more vibrant and opaque. 
and that should do the trick. So if you went to the edge here, great. If you didn't, that's fine too, because we'll, it's only going to get more blue indigo towards the edge, but we have a nice ring of some purpley colors. So I wash that off. And in just a minute, I'm going to go back, do a second coat here close to the moon. Again, it gives it more of a vibrant, deep purple color that we want. And then we'll do a second coat of that violet really close here and we'll start going outwards more blue indigo and this is where you can change the color if you want to go more pink you can do more pink instead you know pink is nice with a nice little glow a little touch of white here Nice and reddish, pinky purple. It's only got a hint of blue. So when I go over this again, with, with my little bit of water, not too much water, just a nice chunk of paint, a little bit of water. You know, you can just define, be a bit more precise. There we go, more solid. And to help with that glow, right away, just along the edges, because you know, having that ring and then all of a sudden going to just a different color, eh, we can have it a bit more blended. It's a bit nicer that way. To go back to our violet. Okay, you didn't, I didn't wash off my brush, so it's not really a big deal. I just kind of go around the edges a little bit and just very lightly. Shrink it closer into that purple, help it blend a bit. Blends it out, a little bit in here. So it's like gradually getting into more of a deeper purple. With a really thin ring going around that moon. Okay, so once that's a bit more blend it out. You don't need to do your second coat of the dark purple right away because it's still probably a little bit wet, which makes it harder to get rid of the streaks. So you can get your blow dryer, you can blow dry it. And then we're going to add our indigo coming in close to that violet that we did. However, in the meantime, you can wash off your brushes and just go back into your moon, you know, touch it up because now it's definitely should be dry, definitely dry. I go back to my medium flat brush. And you just go back to your yellow with that little dab or two of red, depending on how orange you want to go. Okay, and just don't have it too heavily coated. It's lightly coated. And now I can go over, do that. I can just go over some of my spots and just use your finger to smooth some things out. Add a touch more red if you want a little bit deeper orange. I'm using the corner of my brush, just lightly tapping. So almost like dry brushing, we don't really need water at all. I didn't add any water just yet. And just keep going until you feel like, you know, you've had enough of this color very lightly. I'm going to swipe around close to the edge here to keep it still looking a bit rounded.
So if you're feeling, you know, a little bit fancy, like you want to go a little bit more, you know, you can do a little bit tiny bit of a deeper color, something like that. You can add a bit of a browning. So you add the tiniest little dot of black, dot of red, big scoop of yellow, just tiniest little dot of black. Add a touch more red if it's too greeny yellow looking. You get a bit of a browning, but it's still orange looking. See, we didn't add too much black. Otherwise, it's going to be just straight brown. So wipe that off. And then this is, this is as much as you want to add. You can always add a dot more black if you want it even deeper in color. So I'm wiping. It's more of a dry brush. I haven't dipped it in water. And I like to use the corner. Just kind of lightly tap and dab. You can get it even darker on this side so it's lighter on the other side and once again uh, it's easy to blend out just wash that off and go back to my remember that lighter color that yellowy white with a dot of red and you can just tap 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 kind of dab over it just to blend it out soften it I like to go over a lot of these and you can just work your way between some of these sections. More white if you want it even brighter, right? So mostly white. You can add little highlights into the darker side. Okay, going back to a bit of my orange, wipe off a little bit. And you know, I've, there's so many ways you can do this. Um, I like to just use the corner and kind of rub it in a little bit. You can use a napkin or a sponge and kind of make it a bit more spongy textured. But that will give it a lot more texture. So I don't know if you want it to go too textured. See the corner, just kind of rub it in. You can give it more of a smoother look. Okay, so what you want to do is you just take your step back, make sure that um, you're happy with how things are looking. I just like to put one final ring around the moon. And okay, yeah, I'm done kind of playing around with this. So with my smaller brush or even a detailed brush, just take I just pull more white. I just take mostly white, touch of yellow, or that slight light orange that we were using. It can just be white if you want it more of a white color. And I just go around with a little bit of water. Just around the edges here. If you like more of a glow, you can go a little bit outside, just lightly press, don't want too much paint. You can give it an extra little glow around the edges.
It's an extra little glow there. And you can always clean up with your purple. So let's start going into that deeper indigo color with our large brush. You don't need too much water on it because you already have a lot of this purple already in here. Okay, kind of just dab it dry. And I'm just pulling red and blue equal parts. It's going to be a very bluey, dark looking. See? Super dark. Kind of looks, it looks close to black. It's not black. When you look at it, you're going to go, it's not black. It just looks really dark. Okay, I'm going to start all the way out here. This is a good spot. I like to go right to the edges. Right to the edges. Fill that in. Use up a lot of your paint. And then now we are going into and on top of our violet. Keep it nice and rounded. We're going to work our way closer and closer to this purple color. Let's do the side and the corners. Corners, see, it gets just darker when you, you're doing, it's like a second coat, you know, you're going right on top, right around. Now yeah, I'm just getting nice and close. Feel free to switch brushes if needed. There, so we have more of that ring going around. And um, one thing to kind of help a little bit with this is to just, if you want to, take some blue and a touch of white. If you want more of like a, a bluey color to show through. And just a little bit of red too. So only a small little touch. If you want more of a blue color to show into your background, you can do that if you want. See that more blue. So I'm going to go out to the edge because it's going to only get black out there. And this will give it more of a deeper blue. So if you like the purple, don't add this, but this is while it's still wet because it kind of picks up the purple. Yes, it's going to look a lot more blue. But if you're trying to go more to like how the, the picture is and how the original is, just put in a little bit more of that gives it a bit more of a bluey shine. See? You just go over it a few times with your brush. You just do that so it gets blended in. You can get rid of streak marks if you don't want it too streaky. Go over the edges a few times here. Just press lighter. Just take your time. Nice and soft. And look at that. We got more of a blue shine. Okay. And what I do is I like to wait for these edges. You could do the same on the edges over here. Um, wait for that to dry a little bit. Because then we can put in some black. And then we can do our stars.
what I'm going to do is just go over my purple a little bit just again. I'm going to get a bit more purple, or red actually. Need a bit for later, anyways. So this is your painting, your preference on what you want. You can do a bit more red in here if you like it more reddish in color. Because, you know, there's a lot of blue, so it kind of it can help balance it out a little as well. So you always start close to the moon. Nice and solid. And then you work your way out and you just keep going over it. Because what happens is when you keep going over it like this very lightly towards the edges, it gets off, it's not as much paint, it gets off a little bit more transparent and lighter. Gives it more of a blended look. Okay, let's put in some black. So the trick with black is let's go to our smaller flat brush. So like that medium one here. Don't put, you don't really need um, water on it. So we're gonna start with black first. And I just take a little scoop of that. I just start from the corner, bring it out a little bit. Stop, do the same thing over here, bring it out a little bit. So kind of just a little bit over here and then other side, other side. This one has a little bit more because there's a little bit more space on this side. So I bring it out just a touch more. And if your blue is still wet, then it will blend out pretty well, quite easily. But if it's dry, this is where, um, this is where you probably need to blend it out with just straight blue or blue and some, some red, like a deep indigo violet, depending on your preference. Mine was still a bit damp, so that's why it's blending out really well. And I just go over it a few times. So I'm washing this off. Going back to that same exact blue I was using before. Remember this one with a touch of red and a touch of white, still dark looking. I like to go right over the edges. So this is like right over the edges. I like to pick up a bit of that black just right where it's stopping and see it just kind of blends it out. I go out into the black and it blends it out. Okay, so again, right on the edge of where my black was and pick it up, let it pick up some of that color and go back out into the black. You can, it's like you're moving the paint around a little bit so it fades a smidge. Go right on the edge, blend it outwards. Okay, let's pull this up a bit closer. Maybe have a nice glow to like a bluey indigo color where you could keep going with some purple. That's just the violet. And you just want to make sure that you're happy with all your colors that you have in here. 
before you move on. All right, let's put in some stars. So you can flick your stars on if you like doing that little flicking technique, or you can do the back handle of your detailed brush. You can just poke around. And you can see I like to do it pretty random. You can make a constellation in the sky. I'm gonna do just a couple little flicks actually. I'm gonna use my detail brush, dip it fully submerge it in the water, just a little bit of white. So you're just gonna fully submerge your brush into the water, make it a little bit of white watery, and then fully submerge again, and then just spray. And flick it back and spray. Try not to touch the moon, but. Okay, so that's a little bit. And then I'll just go back to poking in a couple stars. And you can, after you do your flowers, you can always add in more stars at the very end too. That's an option. Okay, great. All right, so all we have to do, we just have to focus on making our branches and putting in our flowers. So for the branches, I would I would just use maybe a detailed brush. This is my number four. We're gonna make a nice dark, like chestnut brown, and then highlight it and then put our flowers when that's dry. So let's take, you can take dirty contaminated colors. So right over top of your orange, for example, even if it's touching purple, I'm gonna take dirty red um, don't really care about the blue actually. You can add blue. I'm going to take a big scoop of yellow. So equal parts red and yellow that are contaminated is fine. It makes brown pretty quickly. And then a little small, very miniature size of that pea size of black and it just gets deep chestnut brown. So you can see I, I touched a little bit of blue or purple. That's okay. I'm just going to help make brown but the black will definitely make it brown. And then you just have that. So I just twirl my brush with some water. Twirl the brush. And then let's start placing our brown. I'm gonna start more from the top and it is gonna go right into our moon. So I'm just gonna have this come in and then just kind of dip down, press very light Kind of flick it out water, get more paint. You don't want to keep going over your ends. You can just leave that alone. Press a little bit harder where it's coming from. They're not super thin branches. Okay, so let's start from that same spot. And then we can have a branch coming out. So the branch can come out A little bit right there, slightly go into the moon. Place it wherever you feel like it. I'm going to put a little branch coming up right around here. I just press from within the branch and I just flick it outwards a bit. So I have this branch coming down and you can always add more branches. Maybe I'll, I can add it from this branch or from here. Maybe I'll just add it from here and just have, have this one come in 
Really stretch across. And just fill some branches. Maybe some smaller branches. And where do you feel like adding in? Sometimes I like to do some smaller ones just to, you know, have variety on the length. But you can see they're kind of slightly bent. They're not perfectly straight lines because then it looks like a little too prickly. Okay, let's do another branch coming in. So we have um, the other branch that I want to come in. I just want it to come more from the beginning. And just slightly, just kind of dip down a little bit. And then let's do a second branch come in. So a little gap from here, I'm not going all the way down. Um, I'm gonna go pretty close to this one, but still a bit higher up. And then this one's gonna come out just a little bit longer. It's kind of dipping down a little bit more. So I want this one to sort of come out and overlap this one and just kind of cut across towards the other side. Don't forget, a little bit of water does help. It just kind of comes across. And then I like to add branches. Gives it a bit more shaping as well. Branch coming down here. And then maybe just a little one towards the edge here. A little branch come down over there. Just dip down. Definitely filling up the space, so we don't need to add in a whole ton of branches because we have a lot over here and then just oh, there's a lot concentrated right in the middle on the sides. Okay. So just add as many branches as you want to fill up whatever space you need to. And I think I will add a couple small branches here. So we definitely fill up the space. A couple small, another small one right here. There. So with your same detail brush or something smaller, if you've been using a bigger one, just take, while it's still wet, just take white on your small brush and just highlight. You can highlight um, whatever side, like whatever, like the moon is right here. Maybe I'll go within my branch and I'll just, lightly highlight. You can add a touch of yellow too, since your moon is more yellowy. You can go a bit more yellowy. See that? And it just gives it a nice highlight. Um, if you do too much, and it also makes it look a bit thinner on your branches, if that's an illusion that you're going for. See that? Nice little highlight. Touch of yellow in your white if you want to give it more of a yellow glow from the moon. Right on the top here, because the moon's more hitting from the top, I guess. A 
and it just pops out your branches a, a, a bit more. You can see it a bit more against the background since the background's really dark. Okay, so go back to your super dark chestnut brown if you need to cover some of the brightness. It's a bit too thick for your liking, all that kind of stuff there. And just, you can smooth it out, hide some of your highlights, make it look softer, not as bright or just hide it completely if you don't like it. But when I go over this, I get a nice subtle highlight. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and then we're going to wait, go get your blow dryer and you can blow dry it, it will dry really fast. We're going to add in our flowers Lots of variations of some pinky purples or just pink. We start with a darker color and then we go a bit brighter for highlights. Okay, so I'm gonna wave this around for 30 seconds and we'll start our flowers. All right, so should be dry. And when it is dry and you're ready, let's start our flowers. I like to use that medium, smaller uh, round brush. You can try, you can try with both of these and see which one you prefer. Let's try with the flat one just to see how it goes. I'm washing this off. And they, they give um, both very different type of looks sometimes, and it depends on the look that you're going for. For more of a blowing in the wind kind of leafy look, you want to use this flat one. It's pretty good. But you can also use it for this one as well. I am going to use a dark purple first. So for a dark purple, we're going to add red. Mostly red, touch of blue, and just a little smidge of white. So you get that, remember this, it's pretty much <laughs> this color right here. Remember we used that one? Yeah, it's that one. Um, this one doesn't really have too much white though. So when you add a little bit of white, it goes a little bit brighter. And it gets more like that color we were just using. Okay, so I'm just gonna 
get rid of that little line. It's going to bug me. So let's use the corner. We're not going to use it straight on. We're going to use more of the side and corners of it. And just to test it out, let's test out more towards the edge. So I'm going to just press, kind of flick it off to the side. Let's go closer. See, it's nice and dark. We're not going to do highlights just yet. So we're going to press. Look, and we're going to try to concentrate them in one spot. So I'm just going to press a few times. These, these are what, these are like the layers underneath, kind of like the background color. When we go on the edge here, you know, press and flick. They're like basically touching the branch. Sometimes they're not quite touching the branch. And over here, we're going to leave a little gap again. And we're just going to do a couple little dabs just to get it. So I did a flick on the other side. And it's almost like you made, in a way, kind of like a flower. Very abstract. Let's try with this brush. See how it's looking. Um, so when you press, you just press and flick it away. It does... Kind of the same thing. And you can blob in just a little bit down there, up here. One, two, three, four, five. Just going to go around. One, two, that one I scoop. Three, four, five. It's like the background layer before we do the actual. Um, flowers themselves. Little flick, flick. Little blob. Sometimes I like to do blobs. I don't make it too perfect. Just do a couple of dabs in there. And also this is a good base coat for when we put the highlighted color on top. You can see it a little bit better as well. I'm going to put a little blob. I want to put a flower there. It just sets you up a little bit easier. And maybe next to it, I'll put another little blob. Because I don't want to have even spaces going all throughout. I want some gaps in between as well. I'm going to leave a little gap. Put some blobs here. And I had a lot over here on the side. So there's a lot coming in from the very edge, which we're going to put with some brighter pinkish colors. Okay, a little bit of a gap here. And when you get to the tails, just put a couple little leaves in a way. See? A couple little one, two, three, like on each side. One little flicking out on the end. There you go. So over here, a couple flicking out on the end. Gives it a softer look on the ends instead of like bulky flowers sitting out there. One, two, there. Just on the ends. And I'll put a big blob here for some flowers that I want to put in. I'm just adding some leaves, kind of filling up some space wherever I think it's a bit empty. And I have a big gap here, so I want to put some on the ends here as well.
Okay. So we'll add more later if needed. Let's see, I have a lot going on. So what I do now is I just take red and white. That's all I need right now. I'm taking a pink. So I'm going to take mostly, um, say mostly red and just a little scoop of white. So it's like a hot pink. Okay. And here we go. We're going to add in some more detailed flowers, but over top of these ones, I'm just going to basically going on top of what already is existing. Just going to do a couple of dabs there. Now you have more dimension. Go just over top of some of these leaves. But you don't have to go over every single one. Yeah, it just adds a nice highlight. You can always add more white if you want it even brighter. So when there's blobs of um, your for your flowers, I just make the blob even um, kind of a little bit bigger. Not bigger than what I've done, but you can. I just go right over top of it, and I just kind of imagine I'm making, like I'm flicking it, making four to five petals. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five. And you just have it sort of like a flower shape. And you don't all have to be like that. You can just do more of a smaller one so that you have, it doesn't show as big and it's kind of smaller with not as many petals. A little blob here. One, two, three. And don't worry about overlap. I'm gonna overlap this one. One, two, three, four, five. So it looks like you just have a couple there. They're not just one flower, one flower, one flower. Two, four. See, and it comes together, starts representing flowers, that cherry blossom look, and lots of petals, really. I have some going up here, so you can have little petals kind of trailing away, or you can add a little flower um, outside blowing away. So I made sure that I had a lot of flowers right near the edge here. So basically a lot of that dark red is still a little bit of is there, but it's mostly covered um, by flowers, by the lighter color that we are just kind of placing, not so perfectly on top. A nice little undertone. Okay, so other colors you can add in if you want to put more white and a dot of blue, you can get more of a lavender color, a light lavender, definitely drastic in color, but it's, it's great. You can add a new little twist and dimension. So it's like you're, you know, they have different colors and variations to them. So you can go into a flower, just add like a little petal in there to give it a different kind of twist. And I wouldn't say I went crazy with this color, but it's nice to see, especially on some of the leaves.
some in the flowers. Look at that, just comes together really nicely. So I added a bunch of that. You can let it rest for a minute. And from here, you can add in just white instead, just a few here and there. Um, you don't need it to fully dry for that, but you can add in a little bit of white if you want more um, of some of this just into the, the leaves or the, the flowers. I'm just going to take some white. It's okay if it's touching a little bit of red or pink or the purple. And then you can just kind of in the centers, just kind of do a little flick. I like to do little dabs or flicks into the centers, maybe highlight some of the, the petals themselves. Little blobs. Will help with the black from the center stand out a bit more too. Here, even if you don't know where a flower is, which it's hard to tell, right? Because that's just the style of it. Um, you can just make it up, just put a blob somewhere. It'll be the center of your flower and you can around that, just add a, a few more petals if you want it to stand out more. And just let the colors mix too. Don't worry if you're overlapping other colors because it brings more depth, more of a dimension to it. So I wash that off and then right away, I like to use my detail brush, smaller brush, take some black, just kind of lightly dip it in straight on, take a bit of black, just kind of blob it around into the white, let the white kind of move it around so it's not just all straight black. And it can, gives it an interesting look, it gives it a very textured look and it's not just a whole ton of black sitting in there. Some in here. There we go, we got some black in. And it just brings it more together with the flower look, the flowery look. And if it's if you've got a whole ton of black, you just take some, you do the opposite, you take some white. You see, you can just cover. There we go. Pull that back. Um, when it's more dry, you can always touch things up. You don't want to mess around with it when there's black in in these um, in these areas here. That should pretty much do it. Unless I want to put more flowers in or more leaves. So 
all about balance. So try not to go too crazy. Ooh, little dots here in that blob, a couple black dots, and then that's it. That's all you really need to do. So sign your painting whenever you're done. Show them off in our, our Facebook group. So you go to Artist Palette Durham on Facebook, and then go to our groups. Go to the... Uh, the artist palette support group for acrylic paintings. And then final little touches with stars, use the back handle or just use your tiny, tiny brush straight on to your liking. Then you can go in between some of your flowers. And that's it. Thanks for painting along with me, guys. Hopefully this was fun, um, pretty easy to follow and relaxing. This will be up again forever on replay. Maybe you'll paint along with us again soon. And you can check us out on our website, artistpalladurham.com, see what's coming up for free and Zoom events. Also on Facebook, we have lots of events that we post there too. Bye, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.